Back with you now at 922, continuing our conversation with Troy Stevenson with Freedom Oklahoma about the transgender ban that President Trump announced for our military last week. Just a lot of questions. Um, our viewers had a lot of questions about this. Wanted to get your opinion on this one from Christy. She said, would your employer hire you if they knew that they would end up paying more than $132,000 for surgery, more than $1,000 a month for medication, and you would have to miss more than 200 days of work for your process? She also also added the cost is just the point. Nobody cares if they're male or female. The cost is the issue here. What would be your answer to Christy? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think most transgender individuals are entering the military for surgery. But at the end of the day, it just came out last week that the military spends a few million dollars on, on transgender surgeries every year. They spend $84 million on Viagra. I think that if we want to start parsing out what we're spending money on as far as people's health, we're going to get into a real situation. Also. I don't think it's legal to not hire somebody because of a, a medical condition and what medical needs they might have. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty harsh thing to, to think about. Sure. That kind of leads me to my next question. Amber says people could literally be enlisting to get their surgery paid for. If they start the process of gender change, then they are non-deployable for four years, so they don't really serve. Do you know anybody who said, you know what, I think I'm going to enlist for the military so I get my transition surgery paid for and then they can't really deploy me for four years. Do you know anybody who's done that? I, I No, and I would okay. be shocked if any human would want to go through boot camp and, and put themselves in the potential of going to war and, and put themselves in, in harm's way to get a surgery. I mean, that's, that's a level of, uh, it's, it's just a level too far to imagine for me. So you, you would disagree with, yeah. with that? I, I, I think that there is a process for entering the military. Everybody goes through a vetting process. They go, just no matter who they are, they go through this. and. I, I just don't believe that that is part of the problem and I believe that the military has been doing this for 200 years and they're perfectly capable of weeding out who wants to actually join the military and who wants to join the military for some medical reason. Do you believe that taxpayers should be responsible for paying for transgender surgery or sexual assignment surgery for military members? I think that we should cover the health care of our military to the highest degree and I, once again we're paying 84 million dollars for Viagra maybe we should be talking about many things that the military is paying for, or okay. we should be talking about none of them. Okay, so kind of an all or nothing right. thing. Sure. Um, Jennifer wants to know how many transgender people are even in the military from the uproar, which there has been a lot of uproar from this announcement. It seems there are so many, which I find that hard to believe. Kind of what she's saying, are there even enough transgender people serving right now for us to even be having this conversation? I don't think that we should be having this conversation because there's between, the estimate is between three and 15,000. There are two million people serving in our military. So the fact that, that this has become such a conversation and has stigmatized that few people is, is really putting them in harm's way. But that's 15,000 people. That's a lot of people. But when you think about the entire scope of our military, I mean, the transgender community are a very small minority. So it's really harsh to put this much stigma on their back, I think. I wanted to get your opinions on this because already there are as many as just 250 service members. I know that doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but mm -hmm. 250 people, that's a lot. 250 people who are serving our country are in the process of trans transitioning to their preferred genders right. or they've already been approved to formally change their gender within the Pentagon's personnel system. So mm -hmm. they've either began the process or it's already been approved that they're going to change their, their gender identity. As someone very familiar with, with this uh, community, what, what, is that, what does that mean when you're like, okay, you're, you're finally approved, you're going to be um, getting this surgery that you've wanted for so mm -hmm. long, and then all of a sudden you're, nope, actually, hold on, you, you're not getting it, or you're halfway through the transition mm -hmm. and, and you're in limbo. What does that do to somebody? I think it's, it's, it's pretty harsh to deny medical care to somebody, but I think one of the misconceptions is they, they hear about this transition and they think about surgery. Many, many, many transgender individuals use a hormone therapy. It's oh, not okay. surgery. So what they're talking about is denying them medication. That it, it, we're not, every, people take hormones for many things, for many things in their bodies. So it, it is unfathomable to, to deny somebody that kind of medication. That they're, they're perfectly able to serve while they're on these hormones. It's, there's, nothing, there's nothing medically stopping them. So I think the misconception is everybody's going in and having some massive 
surgery when that's not necessarily the case. All right. I want to reiterate what the president said when he made this announcement. He didn't say anything about him hating this community right. or, or anything about um, discriminating against transgenders. He made it sound like it was going to be um, tremendous medical cost and disruption that transgender in the military would entail. So to you, does that sound like it was based on um, a financial a financial problem or more based on an ethical situation? Listening to the military generals that have come out and said things post, listening to what has happened, what has come from the Pentagon, I'm not sure why the president would say that because it wasn't coming from the Pentagon. It wasn't coming from generals. Uh, this information doesn't seem to be accurate. And okay. I would, I don't know where the president got his information, but it seemed like a massive distraction. Um, I mean, these are, and it's hard to say distraction. These are, this is very important to the people involved. This is very important to our community. But it was, uh, it was odd that it was happening at a time when there was a big health care debate and there was so, many, so much chaos going on in the White House and people were being fired. And it did change the conversation. So I, I think it's unfortunate that this community got used that way, but I don't believe that, that this actually was a problem coming from the military itself. So do you think he was maybe using this to draw attention away from the, the revolving door at the White House, the Russia investigation, the health care debacle he was using? this to kind of, and it did. I mean, yeah. this is what we're talking about right now. Right. You think he was using this as a tactic to... Um, I, I mean, I can't read his mind. I don't know the president personally, but that, that, okay. seems, like, that seems to me what happened. The, the effect of, of this, this, these tweets was to distract from other things that were going on. Other issues. And to put more bias onto a community, which is, is it's really, once again, that's just a harsh thing to do to a group of people, it's kind of mean. We're running out of time really quickly, but we talk a lot about PTSD, people who are serving, and I know um, self-harm and suicide right. is, is unfortunately prevalent in the LGBTQ community and transgender community. If someone out there is watching and, and hearing this and they're serving or thinking about serving and, and this has affected them in a negative way, do you guys have some sort of outreach where you're, where you're looking to help people or, or they can call you if, if they have questions or? I mean, they can call me personally. My phone number's on the internet. They can also, if they are in a situation of self-harm or, or in, if they're dark thoughts, I would call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Okay. Um, people, there is help out there. Just seek, um, seek mental health services because it is, when you're, you're treated like this way, when you get this kind of bias and you're stigmatized so severely, it, it's harmful. And I would suggest that anybody reach out to professional help that is feeling like they need it at this point. Troy, I want to thank you so much for thank your time you. and shedding your opinions on, on this situation. Like I said, we received a lot of comments about this. Certainly appreciate it.